guys, welcome to another video. If you're new here, I'm Kelly, and today's video is another tag video. This tag was created by Allie Glines, and it is the 21 questions tag. Now, I don't know about you, but I am a question asker. So like I did used to play 21 questions when getting to know somebody. I just love asking questions, but these questions, these 21 questions are all about makeup, your oldest product, your newest product, overrated, underrated, we are going to dive in to my opinion and I am going to answer 21 questions all about makeup. But before we jump into the actual tag video, this is in collaboration with my beautiful friend Molly from Makeup Molly. I filmed a video, I want to say in the fall, where I mentioned different YouTubers that I love to watch on the platform, and of course I mentioned Molly in my video, and I was surprised when some of you like commented on the video or even DM'd me later and you were like, I had not heard of Makeup Molly and now I'm following her and I love her channel, and I was like, Oh my gosh, like I love Molly, so I'm so happy to share her with you. And if you are new to Molly and you have not heard of her, I'm going to have her channel and her video linked in the description bar down below. But Molly is pregnant with baby number two and she is documenting it all on her new vlog channel, Molly Vlogs. So I'm going to list that in the description bar down below also because if you are into pregnancy or mothering or lifestyle or just, you know, vlogs in general, make sure to check her out. I'll have her vlog channel listed down below. I love Molly. We connected recently in the fall over a couple things. First, I found out that she's in Michigan and I was born and raised in Michigan. So we have those Midwestern roots. Then on top of that, we're from neighboring counties. So like the county that she lives in, I grew up in the county right next to it, so close to each other. We also are fans of the Bachelor franchise. We are part of Bachelor Nation, although I'm very behind. I have not watched Matt's season at all, but I did watch Clarentatia's, so we love The Bachelor. We also have young children at home. I think Brielle is like eight months older than her oldest now, Rowan, because she's pregnant. But Molly and I got to chatting and we actually found out that we do have, um, oddly enough, we do have a lot of similarities. So I absolutely love Molly. She is a gem. She has all kinds of great content on her YouTube channel. She does a lot of reviews. She gets a lot of the ColourPop stuff first. So if you're really into ColourPop and ColourPop reviews, she does a ton of those. She's been doing foundation reviews and wear tests, like wearing her mask. She also filmed a video and shared it during the winter of like her 10 favorite palettes. Like she has all kinds of goodies on her channel. So if you have not heard of her, definitely go check her out. But I'm really excited to do this video in collaboration with her because I was talking to another friend of mine, Yadi from Yadi Beauty, and we were talking one day and she mentioned a couple other creators that she's friends with and she just kind of said to me like, those girls are my friends. Like, if we all quit YouTube tomorrow, like, I would still talk to them on a regular basis. And I got to thinking about that and I was like, if I quit YouTube tomorrow or if Molly quit YouTube tomorrow, we would still be friends too. We would still chat on Marco Polo. We would still check in with each other. Like, I feel like Molly and I would still be friends if YouTube disappeared tomorrow. And so that's why I'm really excited to share her with you today. And I almost forgot to introduce myself. If you are coming over from Molly's channel, hello, welcome. My name is Kelly. I am a Midwestern girl born and raised in Michigan, but I have been in Houston, Texas for a little over 10 years now. I am a teacher. I teach elementary school and I am a mom. I have a little girl. I just, I just love makeup and beauty. I love all things makeup, all things beauty, and I love to talk. So that's why my intro is really long and that is what I am doing here on YouTube. So if that sounds like fun, if you like talking, if you wanna talk about makeup, I invite you to subscribe and stay a while. But why don't we go ahead and jump into these questions. Question number one is what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? And I thought about this for a minute and I actually did a Flashback Friday series on my channel where I went back and visited all of my Best of Beauty products and I realized that in my first few videos, the products that I mentioned were my Makeup Geek Cosmetics singles. 
And I believe that these products, these eyeshadows, are the oldest makeup product that I currently have in my collection. Now my collection was not this large and there were some different shadows when I started uploading in 2015, but I started my Makeup Geek collection before I was even on YouTube. And I started filming, I think, in December of 2015. So these shadows have been around for a while. I still use them. I don't know if that's good or bad. My eyes haven't fallen off yet, but I, I do think that I like to rotate my collection, so I do believe that these are the oldest product in my collection. Question number two is, what is your most recent makeup purchase? So, my most recent recent, like the one that I just made, I made last week, and I purchased from the brand Oryx, Samantha Ravindahl's brand. I picked up a Glow Lust in Selenite, and I picked up one of these Smoke and Reflex in Defiance. I think that's the shade that I got. They have not arrived to me yet. I'm hoping to get them soon, and when I do get them, I do plan on filming a video for you guys. But the most recent purchase that I made that I actually have is the BH Cosmetics Sugar Cone Palette. So I lusted over this palette, okay? I have seen so many Sweet Shop palette reviews and videos and tutorials, and I saw this palette, and I really wanted it, so I went to the BH website, and it was out of stock, and I sent BH a message on Instagram and I was like, hey, I'm really interested in your sugar cone palette, but I noticed that it's out of stock. Are you guys going to be restocking it? And they told me no. They said that it's gone. Like gone, gone. And then I was watching my friend Cara Beauty in the Frizz post one of these palettes and I, and I literally commented and said, I wish I could get the sugar cone palette. I went back and thought, you know what? I'm going to check again and see if they have it. And it was in stock. So I picked it up. That was like in the middle of January. So it just got to me. I haven't swatched it. I haven't done anything with it yet. But I'm a neutral girl. People have been raving about the BH formula and I haven't tried them in a few years. So I wanted to get my hands on that palette. Number three is what is the first makeup product you ever used? I had a hard time remembering because I'm thinking back to like childhood and my teenage years and I was probably using my sister's makeup because she's older than me. But when I tried to think about like purchasing my own makeup in high school, I feel like I remember the Bath and Body Works lip glosses. Like they were in that like squeezy tube with the silver top and they had like the flat tip and you could, you know, press it a little bit and, and get the lip gloss on your lips. So I feel like that was probably the first makeup item that I purchased for myself that wasn't my sister's. My mom did not start letting me like wear makeup out of the house. Like I would play in makeup, but she wouldn't let me wear it like to school or out with friends or out of the house until I was in high school, which was actually 10th grade for me. Uh, so that was, pro that was probably like one of the first products where I could like get away with a little bit of gloss. Question number four, what is a makeup trend that you used to love but now you hate? Okay, hate is like a strong word. And I don't hate it, but I just don't prefer it on myself anymore. When I first started YouTube, I was very into winged liner, and I would do a lot of winged liner looks, and I would also put lashes on top. Now, I was never fully in love with lashes. I really only wore them because I thought that's what I needed to do to be a good YouTuber and Instagrammer. So I would do the whole liner and lashes look, but that was a look that I did a lot when I started my channel, and... I like never wear lashes and I, I have not done winged liner in a really long time. So I don't hate it, I just don't do it anymore. And then question number five is what is a makeup trend that you used to hate but now you love? And that I, I also was kind of stumped. There's not really a makeup trend that I was like, ew, I don't love you and now I'm doing it. But I have started doing kind of like the reverse foundation makeup trend, I guess is what it's called. I've started applying my concealer underneath my foundation, and I don't go in with a cream, blush, and bronzer often, but if I do, I've started going in with them underneath my foundation. So again, not a trend that I used to hate, like I was never like, oh my gosh, I hate that, but just a trend that I'm doing now that maybe I won't be doing in a couple years. 
Number six, what is your favorite step in your makeup routine? So I've been watching these tag videos as they've been going up, and I kind of had a feeling, but I feel like everybody says eyeshadow. Everybody says eyeshadow is their favorite step, and while I get that, and eyeshadow is what I have the most of in my collection, my favorite step is my base. And I'm talking like priming and hydrating my skin and then putting my foundation and concealer on. I don't know why. I don't know why that's my favorite. It just is. There are days where I am getting ready for work and like I'm just really tired so I'll do my base makeup and no eyeshadow. I love eyeshadow, don't get me wrong. I do love eyeshadow and I understand why people are saying that's their favorite because it's probably the most creative but for me it's my base. It's the most relaxing when I'm doing it. I love getting my skin nice and hydrated and just putting foundation and bronzer and blush. I just, I love it all. Number seven, what is a makeup product you can't live without? I liked Michelle Wong's answer. So she said that there isn't a makeup product that she can't live without because she said that she like went many, many years of her life without wearing makeup. And I'm like that. I'm not someone who has to have something on before I leave the house. I leave the house barefaced all the time. I go to work barefaced on occasion. Like it happens. But the way that I was thinking of it is if I was doing a full routine, like what is the product that I couldn't leave out? Like I can leave out bronzer. I can leave out a lip gloss. I can leave off eyeshadow. I can leave off foundation. The products that I would not be able to leave off are my brows. And even mascara. If I could pick two, it would be brows and mascara. But there have been times where I've done my eyeshadow and forgotten mascara and like filmed a video or went out of the house. But my eyebrows. My eyebrows are very sparse. They're very thin. And one day I went to work without having my eyebrows on and a student asked me what happened to my eyebrows. She said, where did they go? They disappeared. I just didn't draw them in. I have to draw my brows in every day because they're like literally non-existent. So that is, that is the part of my routine where if I was doing a full face, I could not skip that part. Number eight, what sparked your love for makeup? I mentioned my sister earlier. My sister Kim is like almost eight years older than me. So she is like seven years and seven months older than me. She has a March birthday, I have an October birthday. So I turned eight in October and the following March she turned 16. So she was into makeup, she was a teenager, I was much younger, but I literally remember like she would be doing her makeup in the bathroom. She had this big basket and all of her makeup was in this basket. It's like, like a tub basket that you would put like books in or like your hair products, like a big basket. It wasn't like tiny, it was a big basket of makeup. And I remember she would pull it out and she would do her makeup and I would just sit there and watch her. I would just sit there and watch her do her makeup. And so I think like just her being older and doing her makeup and going out with her friends, I like aspired to be with her all the time. So I think that is what really sparked my love of makeup. But I do have memories of being really young and my mom had this pink Mary Kay compact and in there there were like two or three eyeshadows, a blush, and a lipstick. And I can remember playing in that when I was really young too. My mom's never been heavy into makeup, like she doesn't wear makeup now, but I do remember she had that and I would play in that. So I mean I've loved it ever since I was little, but I think my sister really sparked that for me. Number nine. What is the worst makeup look you've ever done? So I thought of this as like in my YouTube time because I don't like have any memory or record of looks when I was like growing up. But there is a look and I'll pop it up here and I, I took it from Instagram so I could put the date down there. But it's February 3rd, 2019. So I was pregnant and I did a palette bingo using the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. And I chose the Urban Decay Born to Run palette because it's a palette that I don't love. I have trouble with the shadows. I feel like they don't blend very nicely. I get a lot of fallout with them. So I did a palette bingo and created this smoky look. And I just didn't love it on me. I still don't love it on me. Like I see the look and I feel like it just makes my eyes look too dark. And I already have small eyes to begin with. So I would have to say that that's my least favorite look. But then that, that leads us into question number 10, which is what is your favorite makeup look that you've ever done? And on the flip side, my favorite makeup look that I've ever done, I kind of had two of them. So one of them was February, the year prior, February 2018. 
and I think I used the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette, but I just created like this mauve purple cut crease and I had liner and these lashes and it was very monochromatic with Malibu lipstick. I really, really love that look. I still love it to this day. And then there's another eye look that I thought of from 2016 when I first started playing with cut creases. And I think with this palette, I feel like I used the Anastasia Beverly Hills Master Palette by Mario. And again, it was another cut crease, but I used eyeshadow to make a smoked outliner look. So I was looking back at some of my old makeup looks, and now I feel like my my makeup is much more boring, much more muted. But back then, I started my Instagram before I started my YouTube. And I mean, before I had a daughter, like I literally on the weekends would go in my makeup room and I would spend hours playing in makeup, playing in eyeshadow. I would create these cut creases and stuff and I would have no makeup on my face. Like I think in the picture from 2016, it was just an eye look. I don't even think I did foundation, but I would just spend hours. I would do one makeup look on one eye, one makeup look on the other eye, and I just had so much fun with it. And sometimes I miss being able to do that. I know there will be a time again when Brielle will be older and she won't want to play with me anymore and then I'll probably have the time again and then I'll miss not having time. But now on the weekends like when i'm filming and stuff it's okay get makeup on really fast so that you can film before brielle wakes up but that was my those were some of my favorite looks number 11 is what is your favorite drugstore makeup product well i don't have a ton of drugstore makeup in my collection i do prefer more high end but you just can't beat maybelline mascaras you just can't I have been using Maybelline mascara since I was a teenager, since the early days. Absolutely love them. The Rocket Volume Express has been a holy grail of mine for years and years and years. And don't get me wrong, I do love my high-end mascara, but there is just nothing like drugstore Maybelline mascaras. Question number 12 is what is your favorite splurge makeup product? And I really had to think about this one. And I have two. These were splurges for me. The first one being my Natasha Denona Glam Palette. I have talked this palette to death. I've talked about it in multiple videos. I almost didn't purchase it, but I did, and I absolutely love it. This is one of her midis, I think is what they're called, a midi palette. So it was $65, and I did get it during the Sephora VIB sale, but I absolutely love it. I'm so thankful that that is in my collection. The other splurge palette, I think this is also maybe like $64 or $68, but it's the foundation that I'm wearing today, which is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I wanted to try this for years. Desi Perkins raved about it. I've used like this much. I can see it a little bit here. I mean, I get a ton of use out of it. I love this foundation. It It's not matte, but it's not like glowy, dewy. It just gives me a very, I have dry skin, so it gives me a very healthy look. Like there is some luminosity there. The, the color match is great for me. I'm in the shade 4.5. I just absolutely love it. And I'm so glad I got it. Again, I got it during a Sephora VIB sale. So if you're going to splurge, do it during a sale. Number 13, what is your most repurchased makeup product? And I feel, I feel like it has to be Fix Plus. It has to be Fix Plus. That is what I have purchased the most of. That's what I use the quickest. I use Fix Plus to spray my face. I use it to spray my eyeshadow brush to put, you know, a shimmery shade on. I use it to spray my makeup sponge when I'm like blending my foundation and stuff. But if you don't consider Fix Plus a makeup product, then I would have to say my eyebrows. I have been using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz and Brow Definer in Caramel and the Clear Brow Gel for several years. Those are the only brow products that I use. I've gone through a ton of them. But I do have a whole video about the top 10 most repurchased makeup products. So if you want to see that, I'll link that here and you can hear some more products that I have repurchased. Number 14 is what is your earliest makeup memory? So... Probably the earliest would be that Mary Kay palette that I mentioned my mom had, like, playing in that. But a fun memory that I have, I also have a brother. I mean, I have lots of siblings, but I have a brother who is five and a half years older, older than me. And I had to be, I, I don't think I was in school yet, I had to be toddler age, maybe three or four, possibly five. I got into my mom's Mary Kay makeup, and there was a bright red lipstick in there. And I was trying to put it on myself. And I was doing just fine. Was it all over my lips? Yeah. But I was doing just fine. 
So my brother sees me and comes in and tries to help me. If you have a brother like mine, you know what that means. He put red lipstick all over my entire face. My mom was so mad. She was so mad because it was red. He put red lipstick all over my entire face. My mom was mad, probably more so at him than me. She was probably first irritated that I got into her makeup, but then irritated on top of that, that my brother was helping me because red lipstick stains and it's hard to get off. And I don't remember how long it took her to get all of that off me, but it was everywhere. It was bad. It's funny to look back on now, but I'm sure it was not funny for my mom then. Number 15 is what is your favorite place to shop for for makeup? Sephora. Sephora for sure. Even online, Sephora, the, just the products, everything. I know that Ulta has a lot of the same things, but for some reason, Sephora just has my heart. It's the whole aesthetic, the experience, going in, just their skincare and makeup everywhere. I just love it. I haven't been in a Sephora in a really long time, but when I do go to repurchase products, even if they're products that I can find other places, I still find myself going to Sephora. For number 16 and 17, 16 is what is the most underrated makeup product that you own, and then 17 is what is the most overrated makeup product that you own. I recently, during my 12 days of makeup during Christmas, filmed an overrated, underrated video, so if you wanna see that, you can go ahead and check that out. I wanted to still give you products, but I, I didn't want to repeat myself, but you can check out that whole video if you're really into overrated and underrated makeup. The makeup product that I feel like is underrated that I don't think I mentioned before was the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Hydrating Primer. I have dry skin, so I look for hydrating primers, and I don't think that I've ever heard anybody talk about this. I was just in the market for a new primer, so I went on Sephora's website, went to the primer section, and typed in that I was looking for hydrating, and this popped up. So I got the smaller size that they had, and I absolutely love it. I'm almost done with it. I do wanna try some other foundation primers, but I can see myself repurchasing this again because it almost feels like a moisturizer. I don't know that it's necessarily helping in the longevity of my makeup, but as far as making my skin nice and hydrated and prepping it for foundation, I absolutely love that one. On the flip side, the product that I think is overrated, I no longer own it, but I did it one time, and it is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I did not like that concealer. Everybody raved about it, everybody loved it. People would do the big triangles and color their whole face in Tarte Shape Tape. And I went out and purchased it and it was so thick and creasy. I did not use it all up, I tried. I tried to use it and I couldn't and so that, yeah. That was in my, in my collection at one point in time but I think that was very overrated and I did not like it at all. Number 18, what is a discontinued makeup product you wish would come back? I was thinking about this for a long time. It is the Tom Ford Blush Nude Lipstick. It got discontinued and I have no idea why. It was not limited edition. My best friend's Megs had Tom Ford Blush Nude years ago and I would borrow it from her and wear it, but I never purchased it myself because it's a $50 lipstick. It's really expensive. And years went by, and I would borrow hers from time to time. And then I got back into YouTube and wearing makeup again this, this last summer, summer 2020. And I thought, I'm finally going to get myself the Tom Ford Blush Nude Lipstick. No. It's gone. It is discontinued. Number 19 is where do you go for makeup inspiration? Typically Instagram and YouTube, I don't, I'm not someone who like sits down and is like purposefully looking to be inspired, but when I am scrolling through Instagram or watching YouTube videos, that's where I find my inspiration. I see a makeup look, I see products, I watch tutorials, and that is what really inspires me. I would say more so back like when I was doing just Instagram, it was very heavily Instagram. I would search for makeup looks and I would try to recreate them. I don't find myself doing that so much anymore just because the time that I have to play with makeup is very limited, but still Instagram and YouTube are where I go for inspiration. Number 20 is what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? And that is narrow shade ranges in cosmetics. So I'm talking like foundation shades, concealer shades, like we need to expand our shade range. 
the days of only having like what is it the Misha BB cream I think they did expand their shade range but when I was looking at their shade range they had five shades like what is that even if you have 30 shades but they're all very similar no like we need to expand that and we need to offer makeup shades for the palest of the pale the deepest of the deep everything in between cool tones warm tones olive tones like we just it's 2020 the makeup industry is booming with youtube and everything like we need to do better we need to do better especially when you do have brands who are coming out with these amazing shade ranges like fenty beauty like other brands you can do it too Number 21, what do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? So I hope to see more of brands working with smaller influencers. My friend Molly that I'm collaborating with, she did a collaboration with Doll 10 on some brushes. Love that. I know that Butte Bean did a collab with Shroud Cosmetics when she was under 20K subscribers. Love that. I'm, and I'm not even just talking about collaborations. BK Beauty, they released their True Beauty palette and they put out a video of different content creators using the eyeshadow palette and Glam Girl Chelsea, who has under 10,000 subscribers, was featured in that video. And Yelica Nequest, she just, she's under 100,000 subscribers. She just did a collab with Kaleidos, Club Nebula. That's on its way to me. I want to see more brands working with smaller influencers. Even if it's not collaborations, whether it's videos, sponsored posts, PR, I know BK Beauty sends PR to a lot of very small YouTubers, like that is what I want to see. I think it's fantastic that the top, top 1% of YouTube have made a career out of this, I think that's amazing. But I also think that we have some amazing content creators who are smaller, who deserve those same opportunities, who I feel like have a lot to say. They have a lot to bring to the table. They have great opinions, they've tried tons of makeup, and they have no problem being honest and transparent on YouTube. So that is what I would like to see more of. Brands working in multiple ways with smaller influencers. But that is going to do it for this video. Those are my answers to the 21 question tag. I will have these answers listed in the description box down below. So if you're a content creator, I tag you to go ahead and do this. But thank you so much to my dear friend Molly for collaborating with me. I'm so excited to hear your answers. And really, I want to know. I want to know the oldest makeup in your collection. Because I know you have a large collection. I know you're a collector. I know you like to keep the things. I want to know. I want to know what it is. If you have not checked out Molly's video, I am heading over there right now. I'm going to go watch her answers to the 21 questions. Make sure you do the same. And if you came over from Molly's channel, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed hearing my answers. I would love to have you subscribe, become part of the K Bella fam, hang out with me. And even if you're not a content creator, seriously, in the comments, 1 to 21, I want to know. I like to ask questions. I want to know. Tell me about your makeup. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.